Build visually AI-based apps easily. Let's discover Flowwise AI, a no-code visual editor to create LLM flows. It provides a lot of blocks you can use to feed large language models and to process chain and store their outputs. What it means is, instead of coding a complex system to use only ChatGPT, you can leverage dozens of ready-to-use tools to create complex flows and chatbots, such as database connectors, CSV extractors, and memory storage. Don't worry, if you're afraid to start from scratch, the marketplace provides free templates you can learn and iterate from. Before jumping to the platform overview, let's see how to use it. To use Flowwise AI, you can self-deploy it on your computer or server following the documentation. Or you can use our platform LSTO to take care of the installation, hosting, backups and updates. To install Flowwise AI, go to ls.io, hit login. If you don't have any service yet, click on Deploy My First Service, search for Flowwise AI, hit Select. Then choose your cloud provider, I will choose Scaleway. Then you can choose the region, I will keep the French one. Decide the resources you need for your instance, I will keep the basic. And hit next. Adjust your level of support based on your needs. Rename the service if you need to and hit create service. Now the instance is deployed, I can click here to access the admin dashboard. Then display admin UI. I get the credentials of my instance. Click here to copy the password to your clipboard and click on the link to access it. The default username is root and the password from my clipboard hit login. When we arrive, we have two options to create chat flows. The first one is to create one from scratch here or find examples and templates on the marketplace. But for now, let's go to credentials and connect OpenAI to our instance. To add credential, click on the top right here and select the kind of credential you want to add. Me, it's OpenAI here, credential name and open API key. Once it's, oh, I need to rename it. So it's OpenAI API and add. Now it's added globally to the instance. I will be able to use it easily into the chat flows and the marketplace. Let's create our first chat flow, we'll do it with a template from the marketplace. You can see that for each template, you have the title, what it is and the description, but you can see all the different blocks that are used to create that flow. As we just added OpenAI, we will look for one that is using it. It's uh, this sign here. The template we will be using is simple conversation chain. It's basic example of conversation chain with built-in memory works exactly like ChatGPT. It's different is that it will handle the memory for us. But if we wanted to develop it, we would have to store the memory ourselves. But let's have a look at it. First, we have a preview of the visual editor to see all the blocks that are used on this template. It's fine for me, use template. So what do we have here? We have one block of chat open AI. We can link our credential that we just created, but you can see we could have created it here. Then you can decide what model you are using between the different version of ChatGPT. Let's use the four. You can adjust the temperature and some additional parameters. Then it is linked to the conversation chain. What it does is it takes a language model as an input, so OpenAI or any other one, it also requires a memory, so it will persist across different call to the chat flow. And the output will be in the chat. Let's give it a try. We can try it by saving here. We need to name it simple conversation. Save. Now it's saved. We can preview it with the top right button here. Hi there, how can I help? Tell me a funny story. And it's generating a story using OpenAI and our API key. So the credits used here are for us. Okay, so now I have that working ChatGPT ready to use. But here we are in Flowwise AI. We want to use it elsewhere. How do we do? We click here on the embed button and we have all the different ways to embed it into our website. The first thing to take into consideration is that right now it's open. So if you add it into any website, anyone can call your OpenAI chatbot. The risk is uh, it's using your API key and you don't want people to consume it. So when it's the case and only you want to have access to it, you need to add an authorization key. By default, there is the default key added on your instance. But because it is a demo and I will kill the instance, it's not a big risk. So I can just keep the no authorization. 
then I have the choice to embed it on a website, either using a pop-up, a complete section on my website, or using React, and the same one, but using React. Let's choose the pop-up HTML and copy the code here. I go to my favorite website builder for video demonstration, insert HTML before end of body. So I can paste the code here. It's like putting it just before the close tag of the body section on my website. It is set up correctly. I hit save and I click here to access my website. Now on my page, I have access to the chatbot. I can open it here and talk to it. It's directly embedded into my website. What is an open source software? And it's answering me using OpenAI. If I wanted to code it manually into my website, it's something doable, but it takes a lot more time. We've seen you can embed it into your website easily, but you can also embed it using the, your backend. So either with Python, JavaScript, it's the Node.js version, curl, and you can share access to the chatbot, deciding to make it public or not. Okay, let's create another one, but this time we will create it from scratch. So we are in chat flows, add new, and you might wonder where to start. And that's why we started using a template because it shows us visually how it works and to have something ready to use. So how it works is on the top left here, you have all the different blocks you can use to create your chat flow. You have different types of agents. You have, for example, the memory we we're using it just before. It was using the buffer memory so it's the instance memory. But you can decide not to store it into the buffer of your instance, but instead you might want to store it in a real database, just Redis. There are all kinds of blocks to help you create your chat flow, extracting data, storing data, and processing to create visually without having to code anything. What we will do is I created an API function that we will call. Let me show you what it replies. So we call it without any parameter and it's a get request. And what it answers is a list of users. Very simple with a JSON format. Let's copy the URL of our API call. Now here, what we will search for is API. We'll be using a document loader. So it's to extract data from outside our chat flow. API loader, we drag and drop it. The method here, you can pick it, it's a get. And the URL is the one that I have in my clipboard. Most of the blog, they have one or multiple inputs. Here it's a text splitter, but it's not required. It's if we want to process what the API returns, but because we will be using ChatGPT, it will be able to do it automatically. Then the API will load the document and we will have it as the output to use it elsewhere. Like we did previously, we will be using ChatGPT. So open AI, we want the chat open AI one. Put it here, connect credential. It's still my OpenAI API. I'll be using GPT-4 and we need to connect it to a conversation chain. So like it did for the previous example, we need a language model, in our case, OpenAI. We can add the optional parameter, which is the document. So it will be used as a text to feed our chatbot. We link the document here to here and it's required, we need a memory. So we'll go to the memory section here and use the buffer memory. We drag and drop here. We can choose a different memory key. If we have multiple chat flow, we, you can connect them using the same memory key or you can use different ones based on your needs. Link it to memory here. If I didn't make any mistake. We can save it. API get call example, save it. And on the top right, we can preview the result. Give me the list of names. It's writing to me the list of names of the users from the API. So the first one is Shirley, Lauren, Kathy. If we go back to our API, it's exactly what we have. Shirley, Lauren, Kathy. Let's try if it really gets any data. What is the highest ID from my users? It's 24 and it's the case. It's 24 here. Can you tell me what field five stands for? 
And you can see it really has access to the data. It's exactly what it is. Sometimes it's an image, but sometimes there is no field five. As you can see here, here it's null and here it's an image. You can see how easily we connected ChatGPT to the outside world, to the net. Of course, it's a simple example, but you can go way beyond. Even using the same chat flow, you could ask your API to get the current trading stock's value. Then you would add maybe a CSV, a CSV file, and you would add all your shares and it will be automatically able to be a trading bot based on the current price on your shares. And you could store the results into either Redis or into PostgreSQL. So you can really create advanced stuff from it. For the demonstration purpose, we've stayed kind of basic. I recommend you to go through the different blocks and try to create advanced bots. Let's go back here. Okay, now we can see our two chat flows. We can add other one and automatically it shows you all the different blocks used so you can get in a glance what it's about. If we go to tools, here you can create blocks from API. So what we did was just an API call. But the issue from it is that we had no idea of what the output of our API was. Well, I knew it, but for other people, they don't know. So what we can say is we we show the output schema, so first name, last name, etc. We would explain what it outputs, so it could be stock market. You would have the name of it, the symbol, the current value. And this will be available either for you or you can make it available to everyone. And the data you get from the API, you can process it using a JavaScript function. In our case, it wasn't a requirement, but it can help you achieve great and advanced results. We've seen how to add credentials connecting OpenAI, but you can add others and the one you will add directly in the chat flows will appear here. So if you want to disconnect them, you can do it just here and it will disconnect everyone. As we've seen in the embed section, you can add authorization and it's using your API keys you will define here. One is set up by default automatically when you create your instance. You can revoke it, edit it or create new ones. You have the nice option to switch between light and dark mode. And one other great option is that you can export the database. And what it contains is the in-memory database. So you can see, tell me a funny story, it was saved into the chat messages section. So let's say you want to migrate from one instance to another, or you want to work with your team and show different results, you can edit it, share it with your team, they import it, and you will have the same behavior. Or you can try again feeding and overwriting the in-memory by importing them here. You can make past mistake, edit the in-memory database or remove it and reproduce different actions. Thank you for watching. We hope you will create great tools with Flowwise AI. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button as it really helps this channel be more visible to other open source lovers. If you have any question or request about software you're looking for, don't hesitate to ask in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our upcoming videos, but you can continue discovering great free open source software watching this video here.